Hey engineers, this is Mr. Hernandez and in this week's lesson we're going to be looking at food um, but through the lens of environmental engineering like we learned about last week. So last week we learned uh, from uh, Tamar that environmental engineering is about um, cleaning up or preventing the contamination of um, the soil, the water, and the air. Um, so we're going to be looking at all three of those and how they're affected by food production in the modern world. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with the soil. Um, so how does food affect the soil? Where, well, the biggest way that food production kind of affects land is just in the way that we use our land. Now, if we look at this uh, pie chart right here, we can see that in the United States, um, we use 52%. We use half of all of the land in the country to grow food. Um, in contrast, only 4% of that land is used for cities. Now, um, there are other places people live, you know, towns and smaller cities, but you can still see there's a huge amount of space that we give up um, for food production um, in contrast to the places that we live. Um, now, national parks are only 3%, um, and then the rest of it is um, a whole lot of different use cases. Some of that's wilderness, that's not national parks, some of that's open desert, and so on. But still, you can see just how much of the country we give up in order to grow enough food. Um, and that land in the agriculture category, that's split into two different things. Um, so there's both crops or farmland and pastures. And let's look at the differences between those right now. Um, so a farm is land that we're using to grow plants or to raise animals um, for human consumption. So that means that um, if you see like fields of corn or other plants, um, or if you have a place where you're raising chickens or pigs or um, animals like that, that would be a farm. Um, on the other hand, we also have pasture, and a pasture is not the same thing as a farm. A pasture is open grasslands um, that are used for raising animals like um, cows and sheep. Um, the difference is that on a farm, everything's kind of contained. The farmer is feeding the animals every day, whereas in a pasture, um, it's grass that was already there, and farmers just kind of release their animals, release their herds of cows, and the cows go and find their own food uh, by eating the grass. Uh, so that's the big difference there. And as you can imagine, pastures tend to be much bigger than farms, just in terms of space, because the animals are sort of free roaming and uh, eating whatever they want. Now, when you grow plants, um, they're actually pulling nutrients out of the soil to help themselves grow. Uh, kind of think of this as like vitamins that the plants need. Um, and the way that we farm plants uh, can make it so that those plants take all of the nutrients out of the soil and they actually leave the soil being a lot less healthy than when it started. Um, and also when we grow plants, we want to make sure that only the plants that were that we planted are growing. Um, so uh, Farmers will often apply pesticides to kill weeds and to stop bugs from eating the plants. And those can actually get into the soil and kind of cause some uh, bad problems there as well. Uh, some unintended side effects of protecting our plants. So that's how food production affects the soil. Now let's move on to the water. Now food production affects water in a few different ways as well, but the biggest one is going to be from something called runoff. Um, this is where the things that we're applying to the plants, um, when it rains or when we water those crops, they run off into the soil. And that's going to be things like fertilizers, which are, you know we apply on purpose to plants, and also manure and other animal byproducts that um, you know animals just leave behind. Um, and those can cause some issues. Um, the biggest one is going to be algae blooms, um, but these can also uh, contribute to bacteria growth um, and also extra sediment, which basically means like dirt and sand building up and slowing down the flow of rivers. Um, so this is what an algae bloom looks like. And an algae bloom is what happens when fertilizer, 
which helps plants grow gets into like a lake or a river and it get, puts way too many nutrients into that water and that causes the algae which is like these little green plants um, to grow really 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 fast now that's a problem because when the algae grows so fast it can actually pull all of the oxygen out of the water and it can also leave behind poisons and toxins from their own growth and that leads to everything else that's in the water with the algae like the fish and the other plants and the crabs um, it can lead to all of those animals dying off so too much of a good thing can build up and then we get a bad thing like we can see right here all right so that's how environmental engineering affects water let's go on to the air now obviously you know plants and animals are on the ground so you might be thinking how can that affect the air well there's a couple of ways um, the first one is from particulates so this is basically the same idea as the runoff you know it's things that we're putting on the plants that um, that washes away except sometimes that stuff gets picked up by the wind and it blows away um, so there are particulates of um, you know pesticides and fertilizers and even the animal byproducts that can get up into the air and cause a lot of dust but the bigger way um, and the more long-term effect is from the release of greenhouse gases um, and that can come from a few different places um, so we've been talking a lot about manure and animal byproducts like that um, well animals also release a lot of methane which not to be gross is uh, one of the gases that makes farts smelly um, and animals put out a lot of this and methane is actually a really really big greenhouse gas it's actually worse than carbon dioxide um, now there's not a lot that we can do about that besides having less animals though um, another uh, source of greenhouse gases though is from carbon dioxide um, and carbon dioxide is what we usually talk about with regard to global warming um, this is you know what comes out of the tailpipes of cars uh, for example and that's kind of how this becomes an issue for food production so some carbon dioxide is emitted during uh, production as part of you know producing the fertilizers as part of driving the tractors through the fields um, but the really big issue comes from transportation from moving the food around um, so if you want an example of like what particulates can do, um, if you end up driving through the Central Valley, like if you're driving from Los Angeles up to San Francisco, um, sometimes you can see like a haziness like this off the road. Um, that's just a lot of dust and a lot of uh, fog kind of building up and coming off of the farms there. Um, but that is, like I said, kind of a lesser issue here. Um, it's bad if you're sitting here in the field, but it doesn't really carry very far. It's the greenhouse gases that are sort of the bigger deal. Um, so let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into transportation. So what is the big deal with transporting food? Well, there's a couple of problems here. Um, first is most farms, most places that we grow food, they're far away from the cities where the people need to eat the food. And the only ways that we can really transport it efficiently um, are going to emit carbon dioxide. It's because um, by modern transportation, we mean things like trains and boats and trucks to uh, move this food around. Um, now, it, if it wasn't bad enough that the farms aren't close to the cities um, we can also run into issues where we need to process food um, because processed food is going to be transported at least twice um, because if you think about it let's say you're trying to buy not potatoes but potato chips well somewhere out there is a potato farm and when those potatoes were harvested they were probably put on a truck and then taken somewhere else to be processed into potato chips and then put on another truck and taken somewhere else to where a person can actually buy them so processed food gets tra uh, transported even more than just uh, going straight from the farm to the people that are eating it. 
And this leads to a concept called food miles. Food miles are the total distance that food has to travel from beginning to the place where a person is going to eat them. And food miles are kind of a rough way of keeping track of you know, what the environmental impact is of this piece of food. Um, so we're going to uh, take that concept and we are going to actually use this to help analyze um, a meal in just a moment. All right, engineers. So after watching this video, you guys are going to go through this quiz and we have an activity at the very end. I don't want to help you guys out with it. Um, so you're going to be answering these questions up here and that's kind of like your own quiz section. Um, but I'm going to go over this bottom section with you guys right now. So we are going to be analyzing um, this very simple breakfast. It consists of scrambled eggs, toast, and orange juice. And we're going to figure out the food miles for this meal. Um, now, as a few assumptions to make this a little bit easier. So we're only going to be worrying about the main ingredient in each part. Um, so there's a lot of ingredients that go into bread, for example. <clears throat> um, we're just going to look at the main ingredient for bread, which is wheat. Um, we're also going to assume um, that whatever ingredients we have, they're just coming from the state in the United States that grows the most of it. So for example, Florida grows the most oranges. We're assuming our orange juice comes from Florida. And last, um, in order to analyze this, we're going to assume that we are bringing this food directly to LMS. So we're going to use Lennox as our destination for the food. Um, so we're going to go over the very first example, and I am giving you guys permission to use this example on your quiz. So that means that when you get to this part, you can use my answers for this. So nobody should be getting the orange juice question wrong. So let's look at how this works. So we've got it split into two sections here. So first, let's figure out which state produces the most oranges. Now, I, and I just happen to know that it's Florida, but let's confirm it. So let's see. We can just copy that question, do a quick Google search. So which state produces the most oranges? Looks like that's Florida. So let's go ahead and fill that in. And now let's figure out the food miles. So the way that we're going to do this is by going to Google Maps. Now what we can do is just type this straight in, switch over to Maps, and we're going to use directions in order to figure out how many miles away Florida is from Lenox. So we set Florida as our destination. We set our starting point to Lenox, California. And there we go. So we can see that Florida is 2,580 miles away. That means that our oranges were transported 2,580 miles uh, to end up as juice in that cup. So the food miles for orange is 2,580. Now, you guys are going to do this for all of the remaining sections here, and then you are going to total it up. Um, so there is one for the scrambled eggs, there's one for bread, and we're using wheat as the central ingredient for that bread. And then there is the total, where you're just gonna add up your miles for the orange, for the egg, and for the bread. We're gonna figure out how many total food miles went into this breakfast. Uh, the answer might be surprising uh, when you think about just how far that food traveled. All right, engineers, um, good luck with this assignment. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, besides that, just have a good week.